Um, I've had in my life many defining moments that really at the end of it, after the situation, I learned many lessons. I think one of the ones that probably had an impact on me for the rest of my life was that when I was 10 years old, I learned English. And one of the things that was really important for my father was education. So I had to, I would get up in front of the class in uh, my, in, when I was in junior high, I mean, or well, 10 years or whatever. And I would get up in front of the class to make sure that I would do extra credit in order to get an A, to guarantee that I would get an A. But in doing that, I w by being up in front of the class, all my classmates would either laugh at me or make fun of me or say, what are you doing, you know? And literally, while I'm giving the, the uh, the speech, if you want to call it, the talk. Um, and the teacher sometimes would say, hey, you guys, stop. But what it really did, and the reason they would laugh at me and make fun of me was because I spoke with an accent. I really ended up, um, you know, mispronouncing words. I would forget words. I totally, you know, would just sometimes make a fool of myself. But to me, it was really important for me to get that A. So it got to a point sometimes when, it, when even after I finished giving that the, the presentation in front of the class, that afterwards the, the, some of the students would even hit me because they would say, you embarrass us. You should not be there. You shouldn't be doing this. And, you know, and you think you, you sound so silly and, you know, you don't even talk right and all those kind of things. But I used to say it didn't matter because my father, it was more important my father's opinion of what, you know, what was happening. And in the combination with that, earlier in my life also when I entered the school system in Texas, I learned one thing. I used to get hit by the teachers. I would be sent in front of the class and be hit in my hands and in my uh, and, uh, thighs, and not thighs, I'm sorry, calves. And I thought, well, you know, I get home and my thighs, I'm sorry, my calves would be all red. My palms on my hands would be all red. And my mother would say, what happened? And I would tell her, oh, you know, the teacher hit me. And my mom would sometimes say, well, I guess you must have done something wrong. And I'd go, yeah, yeah, maybe I did. Maybe I was talking in class. I later discovered that, that the white kids or the English speaking kids were not, who talk in class did not get into trouble. And all of a sudden I realized it's because I speak Spanish that that's why they hit us. They do not want us to speak Spanish. A combination of those two incidents of being um, told that Spanish wasn't any good, that I shouldn't be speaking Spanish and getting punished for speaking Spanish, and also speaking with an accent, not knowing proper English, and being laughed at by my classmates. A comment, what it did to me was that it... Not realizing it, it really made me ashamed of who I was. It made me not want to learn to know Spanish. So I came home and I used to tell my mom, no, my other brothers are not going to speak Spanish. I'm going to translate for them so that they will only learn English. And the other thing is that I really became, um, I... I shame of myself. I shame of being of being Mexican, of being brown, of, of speaking Spanish. I certainly did not want to look indigenous heavens for a bit. And now I am so proud to embrace my indigenous roots and being proud to be Mexican, to be proud to be to speak Spanish. And how did that come about? What that what who you see right now that is proud of who she is, of being a brown woman and being a woman that has indigenous roots. Where did that come from? It was in one time when I came here to San Rosa and I was probably 16, 17 years old and I had to get up in front of the class to, for an assignment and, and to read a poem and the significance of a poem. I remember my stomach getting so upset and remembering how I was going to experience the same kind of um, abuse that in the past had happened. But I remember the night before I sat with my father and we went over a poem. 
we started talking about it. My father, I told him what the poem I was going to talk about. And he went back and he told me his experience. And all that. The next day, I get up in front of the class and I remember my stomach getting so upset and, and, and being in knots and saying, okay, it's okay. They're going to laugh at you. They're going to, you know, tell you, what the heck? You don't know how to speak English and you're this, you know, now and all this. By now, I'm in high school. And so I really didn't, was scared. And, and, and also, you know, here I just came from Arizona. I, I was... You know, I lived in Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and then California. So I come from California, absolutely, you know, a dark woman. I used to wear long sleeves to not to, not to um, uh, get burned anymore. And so I remember getting up there and, um, and starting to speak. And I said, it's okay, just do it. You're gonna get you you you're aiming for an A here and 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 to make your dad proud of you. When I got there and I got up and started to speak, I started to express to everyone there the significance of this poem, my conversation with my father, what it meant to me, this poem and all of this. All of a sudden, I had expected people to start laughing at me, to say, get out, you know, you know, get off and don't talk anymore or whatever, you know, or you talk funny or whatever. And I expected people to start laughing and talking among themselves and laughing and, and making fun of me and everything. And I looked around as I was talking and there was no one making fun of me. No one was laughing. All of a sudden, I saw people being engaged with me and talk and looking at me and even crying because I was also crying as I was giving this the significance of this poem. So I tell people that who you see now, as I speak to you right now, was born on that day. Because on that day, I realized that it did not matter how I talked, if I made mistakes, if I mispronounced something, it's when you speak from the heart that that is when people will look at you and connect with you because you are talking the, your truth and you, more important, you realize that you're being authentic. You're not trying to put on in a show there. You're really talking from the heart. And that, to me, became a moment in my life that had such an impact. Because now when I go and speak in front of people, I don't worry about whether I mispronounce something, whether I finished a sentence. I'm not there to give a speech. I'm there to talk to you, have you understand or, or feel the pain I feel, the happiness I feel, and the whole thing of being, I'm talking from my heart. I'm being authentic. I'm not letting an ego. But more important, I am proud of who I am. I am proud that I speak with an accent. I am proud that I mispronounce words. I am proud to be brown. And I am proud to be indigenous. <laughs>